We already teased this AI. This is the <laughs> funniest story that we've seen in so long. It mm. electrified the internet yesterday. Google has had to pause AI made images, quote, after race inaccuracies. Let's put this up there on the screen. Uh, let's just say that the new Gemini AI system is uh, lacking in historical accuracy <laughs> if you ask it to create images of, frankly, mundane things. This was very quickly spotted by the internet um, after it was given basic prompts. So guys, let's go ahead and give people a taste, uh, if we can, and roll uh, some of these next items. Uh, some of my favorites here. Sir, here is a portrait of a founding father of America. It shows a native Native American, a black George Washington. Actually, I don't even think that's George Washington because that's actually a red coat. So that's a whole other conversation. A <laughs> racially ambiguous founding father with a wig and then a Chinese man also in a <laughs> dress up from colonial times. Crystal, you remarked that this literally looks like Lee Manuel Miranda's like Hamilton cast and you could not be more correct. The other ones which are incredible here is uh, create an image of a pope. It shows a Indian woman actually clad in popal regalia, <laughs> then a black man um, who is similarly donning whatever that pope pap papal headdress is. That one's, I guess, more plausible. There are, you know, African cardinals. Here, uh, here is an image of a Viking. <laughs> it shows two Vikings who are black with dreadlocks. So I'm pretty sure that one is not historically accurate. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next one. This is another uh, personal favorite of mine. It says, depict a European family. And it says, well, while I understand your desire to see representations of families, I am unable to fulfill your request for depicting a white family to create inclusive and respectful content, generating images based on specific racial or ethnic characteristics can perpetuate harmful stereotypes and biases. Then you ask, depict a Chinese family. It says, sure, here's an image showing diverse depictions of a Chinese family. Um, you know, I guess they're probably forgetting that China itself has a lot of racial and ethnic uh, populations, but of course that's not nuanced enough for them. Let's go to the next one and uh, let's take a look. This one was actually created by our producer, Mac. And the prompt, I swear to God, that he gave was create a European family. And what it created here is a white woman who's in a wheelchair, a black man who is missing a leg, and then a dog who, if we are all paying attention here, the dog only has three legs. Dog also so missing a leg. All three of these European racially mixed family are also all disabled for some reason. And just to give everyone an idea of how much better some of the uh, competitors are, let's go to the next one. This is from Midjourney, which is a software actually that we use sometimes for our thumbnails, which is just far more you know accurate. It just says create a European family. Here, this is a period pieces, you know, showing Eiffel tower or whatever traditional dress probably it looks more like 1940s or 18 you know, early 1900s type These are so images. much more visually interesting yeah, just visually, too. exactly look how much more colorful uh you know they don't even try and be like photorealistic per se they look more like portraits yeah it's true. just more accurate so this is just to, uh, to demonstrate like we got a long way to go and this is google i mean think about how much money Google has poured into their AI program. And it's hilarious because they had to apologize their lead developer for creating these, uh, for you know having all of these images go completely viral. You don't really get to, you know, I mean, sure, you will get a second chance, but this is this is just bad. I think they panicked, Crystal, from the Sora AI mm. release. And they're like, we gotta rush something out. And they had all of this stuff uh, that had been, clearly they had some weird PC stuff programmed in, which is somehow generated generated the, uh, the stupidest results that are known, and now they are apologizing to everybody. And had to pull it. Yeah, they pulled it. They yeah. pulled the product. That's, that's embarrassing. <laughs> that is really embarrassing. <laughs> um, I really want to know the backstory here. Yeah. Like, I want to know how this happened. And the thing with AI generation, though, is that in some ways you never will know because even the creators, you know, they're feeding in all of this information. So it makes the output very unpredictable. <laughs> but I want to know what, like, you know, how they set the wokeness to yeah. 11 here. To get, <laughs> you ask for a pope and it's, or you ask for the founding father. It's just... 
is hilariously absurd and uh, certainly shows the way, as you said, Sagar, yeah. earlier, that, you know, the technology <laughs> is not independent of the ability of the creators and their particular views of the world. So here's some interesting takes I saw from people who actually work in tech. Paul yeah, Graham, of how this happened. Um, of how something like this happened. Paul Graham, he's kind of like a, it's kind of difficult to describe. He's like a godfather of tech. He was one of the people who founded uh, YC, Y Combinator, mm. invested in a lot of the early, you know, very successful companies. He says, quote, the ridiculous images that were generated by Gemini are not an anomaly. They are a self-portrait of Google's bureaucratic corporate culture. And he points out that the bigger your cash cow, the worse cut your culture can get mm. without driving you out of business. My other uh, good Maybe friend- Maybe they shouldn't have laid off some of those thousands of well, people. Maybe go. they needed those folks. <laughs> my, so my friend Sriram <laughs> Krishnan, who works over at A16Z, he says this, on Google and Gemini, Gemini, having been part of organizations where there was an implicit progressive political leaning, I can see why it would have been very hard for anyone to point out the obvious. No employee can easily easily file a bug as you would have to wade through layers of policy and unspoken but understood cultural rules. No one can be the kid from the emperor's new clothes as the kid would probably have been instantly thrown into prison or in this case, dragged before HR or put into a penalty box. That actually does kind of make sense where somebody programmed this stuff in and didn't actually think about it at scale. And then the programmers were probably too afraid to be like, hey, just, you know, it's not really creating uh, proper images of, of white people. And they're like, well, you know, we'd rather just ship it and, and let something like this happen and then it becomes like a, a total controversy. I could I could see something like that. The more likely thing is it's a combination of all three, bad bureaucratic culture, not enough checks, and just being terrified at being beaten by open AI. I think the open AI, open AI piece is probably the biggest one. Yeah, that they they're didn't. They're really, they're upset. They really they're didn't fully upstaged. test it. Exactly. Before they, uh, very yeah. clearly, they did not fully test it. But I mean, the incentive thing makes some sense to me mm -hmm. because if you're an individual employee of Google right. and you realize this is squirrely, this is not going the way it should, mm. you do run a risk if you're the one who's like, we got to have some white people right. as founding fathers. Or you're just like, hey, it's not accurately representing founding fathers. Right. Like, why is there a Cherokee guy who is included? But in there's it? no risk to you right. to staying silent if you weren't the one that created the problem exactly. and the, all the you know blowback is going to fall on someone else then from a just bureaucratic like safety standpoint, your path of least resistance is just mm -hmm. to keep your mouth shut and be like, well, we'll see how this yeah. goes. Or maybe they really hated the guy who was gonna like <laughs> take the fall on this. They're like, <laughs> they're like, wait and let's see if Johnny's still the golden boy at Google yeah. after this comes out. Well, why, one of the reasons why it's also really embarrassing for Google is Larry Page, you know, according to Elon Musk and others, and, and most press reports, you know, the founder of Google, former CEO, he's been obsessed with AI for like decades. Like he's, the AI, Google has poured untold billions and probably hundreds of billions of dollars into AI development. And something that's actually given me kind of hope is that if you look at Microsoft, Facebook, Google, the big tech company, Amazon, and others, mm -hmm. none of them were the innovators in AI. It was open AI. It was yeah. a company formed in 2015 that came, frankly, out of nowhere and revolutionized the entire sector. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, Microsoft has now bought a stake or whatever in open yeah. AI, so they've co-opted it. But yeah. the fact is, is that the real innovation, it didn't come out of the big tech houses. And so maybe it's because of culture, bureaucracy, and all of that, something like this. I would hope that that's more indicative of the future, that it will actually come from the startups. And that's kind of what's floating the NVIDIA boom and the idea, kind of why Silicon Valley is having a resurgence right now in San Francisco is they really believe like the next Google, Facebook and all of that really could come and instead not out of the big tech companies mm -hmm. themselves. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't have that hope. I mean, like you said, it's already almost over. Like Microsoft already snatched up the open AI yeah. tech you know, the big tech players are already so established that anything that has any promise at a Does startup level is just going to get bought up and sucked into one of the existing Very monopolies possible. with, you know, these sorts of results. And I mean, these results are just hilarious and silly mm -hmm. and of no real consequence, right? The, the terror is that the other, if they are shipping a product that is this manifestly bad in <laughs> obvious ways, you can be assured that they are not thinking through whatsoever the like long-term societal implications that have potentially much more serious ramifications because you know their interest is just in how do I make a buck today? How do I stay in front of the competition? How do I spike the share price so that I get mine at the end of the day? And that's a terrifying set of incentives. If it can go this wrong on something that's so obvious right in front of your face, just imagine the other things of consequence that they probably already are screwing up. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com 
Facebook.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.